a warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you to Limelight Presents E4M webinar on enhancing the user experience in online education through quality digital content delivery. I am Preeti Katpal, your host for today, and I hope you all are safe and sound at home. Ladies and gentlemen, e-learning is not a new term for us. It's been around for past many, many years, but the lockdown gave a boost to its use. And now it has reached different heights. Today, schools, parents, students, all are trying their best to get friendly with it. And in order to make it user friendly, the edutech experts are working very hard to make the platform content and delivery. Mm -hmm. Today we bring some of the best minds from the edutech industry in India together to share how they take digital education to the next level. Ladies and gentlemen, this session is showcased live on Zoom, E4M, Facebook page, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. And uh, all our viewers are welcome to post your questions in the Q&A section. We will take them during the discussion. Also, uh, we're doing a live tweeting through our official page e4m tweets with hashtag e4m webinar with that ladies and gentlemen may i now introduce our speakers for this session our first speaker mr amit bharbade co-founder and cto uttar app uttar Angush. and uttar you can call it both <laughs> all right very warm welcome amit Hi, next nice to meet we have everyone. Ankush Singla, co-founder and CEO, Coding Ninjas. Everyone. Bhaswan yeah. Agarwal, co-founder, Class Plus. Everyone, hi. Yeah, hi, Bhaswan. Kashyap Dalal, co-founder and chief business officer, Simply Learn. Hi, hi everyone. Yeah, hi, Kashyap. Mohammad Motasim. Founder and CEO, Tutorix. Yep. Hi, everyone. Praveen Tyagi, founder and CEO, Step App. Yeah, hi, Praveen. Sumit Varma, CEO, Copy Kitab. Hi, everyone. Yeah, hi, Sumit. Hey. Shikhar Goel, CTO, Geeks for Geeks. Hey, everyone. Panch Dev Pandey, Product Marketing Manager, Tino App. Ajaz Sheikh, Regional Manager, Limelight Networks. Hello. Hi, Ajaz. Hello. And now, may I please introduce our session chair, Fezal Kabusa, Founder and Chief Analyst, Tech Arc. A little about Fezal who is a senior technology market analyst and founder of TechArc, which is into technology analytics, research, and consulting services. Prior to this, he has worked with organizations like IDC and CMR, serving leading technology brands with insights and market trends. Fezal is closely engaged with the CXO leadership and strategy, strategy terms, advising on product portfolio, go-to-market, channel operations, and other areas. Fezal plays an influencing role in the technology domain and actively writes columns in leading tech and mainstream publications. Uh, I now request Fezal to take charge from here. And everybody is welcome to put in their questions in the Q&A box. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thanks a lot for introducing everyone uh, and Preeti. And, uh, Welcome everyone to this session. Uh, welcome audience. Welcome my esteemed panelists. Uh, I'm sure over the next uh, 90 minutes or so, we are going to have some really, really interesting discussion uh, around e-learning, what's evolving out there, and probably what are, you know, uh, what is being done by the industry, so to say to enhance this experience and take it to next level. Uh, before perhaps starting that, a question arises, is there really a need to do so? Do we really need to enhance this experience? Well, uh, to my mind, I think, you know, 
there is always room and scope for improvement and and every day sets its own benchmark so we need to do better the next day that's of course one of the natural you know reasons to grow uh, but you know this pandemic this covid-19 situation led many of us i know you know all of you are not so to say you know a product or a factor of covid-19 you were already there but for many of us in every perhaps every business out there we have seen something what i love to call as digital jump start you know we 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 were caught up in a situation that uh, simply we, when we woke up we had to find out a solution what to do now how to deliver how to execute the business and these are always contingency approaches so when something like this happens uh, yes the the experience the delivery everything is very very important it's always on on mind that we want to deliver the best but sometimes you know we have to uh, take uh, some 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 quick course and and at at times you know we may not be optimally using whatever is available at the same time this e learning has grown exponentially exponentially uh right now you know i think everybody with whom you you talk to you'll find you know one or the other person going on you know pursuing one or the other course and there are many i think motivations somebody is wanting to enhance skills somebody knows that perhaps the current industry in which the person is is not working rightly uh, somebody is just finding more time and you know uh, taking it as a hobby so i'm i'm really privileged that we have a great panel today which is uh, one the panel size in itself shows that everybody is very very you know uh, i would say keen to enhance the experience and that's why we are here uh, perhaps to learn and share what our experiences second i am very very privileged that we have perhaps all possible you know uh, i would say uh, options and flavors of e learning with us today so i would just start my questions uh, with uh, bashwat probably uh, i want to understand like what has this covid-19 meant for e learning just very very top view from you and what were those a couple of things that you had to quickly augment for the for the, for for your for your platform all right so traditionally uh, coaching centers have predominantly remained offline there have been traditional brick and mortar setups uh, which have uh, taught students in a very classical offline manner as soon as the covid struck the whole industry had to adapt to a changed environment overnight coaching centers were asked to shut down i think they are predominantly the worst hit industry when it came to covid in terms of operating their physical infrastructure uh, for us uh, obviously market education and adoption was the was the fight that we were fighting when when we were pre covid but post covid the adoption and the education and the need was established very clearly and the coaching centers started adopting very rapidly uh, life classrooms live teaching online teaching was not even on our roadmap we were heavily on recorded content and that was doing very well for us recorded content and online assessments were doing very well for us overnight we had to build a live solution and deploy it on our uh, customer base of about 3000 apps uh, that was a huge change for us then the tutors started adopting the live technology very quickly teachers are uh, in the middle age they are not very tech savvy Uh, and overnight they had to adopt a completely different methodology of teaching so one was the technology ch challenge second was the delivery challenge wherein they had to adopt to very quickly and i think hats off to the teacher community they did a fantastic job in terms of adopting to technology very quickly and overnight shifting the base from offline to purely online so that was the biggest change that we noticed when when it came to covid okay great great coming to you probably shikhar uh, you know you you deal with geeks and i know they must they must have you know had so many problems with you know this is not working well this, that's not working well so what exactly did you face so in our case what happened was we were already trying to move all our systems to an online learning basis model right so we had like classes already done before it was a pre covid era so that was easier for us as in in terms of learning but yes uh, in terms of change what happened in the covid is that people went to their homes the people who were learning from their colleges the libraries 
the network change, right? And the devices change. So that is something that we had to focus more of our, I, I guess, in terms of investment that you mentioned, that is one thing that you will focus on is basically to provide the learning in terms of the devices that they are operating on and the network that they're, that they're working on. So that is something that we faced the challenge and we had to really up the game in, our, in that case. So. Okay, great. Um, my probably next question is to Amit. Amit, probably you can utter about you know, some of your experiences. So, so what were those experiences? What really uh, led to this digital jump start for you? Like, uh, like Bhaskar has mentioned, I think offline to online was a no-brainer for post-pandemic and uh, it was not much of a choice. So while uh, you know, online uh, education is something Indian customers are not used to paying for, I don't think that's a choice anymore post-pandemic. And um, one of the main things that uh, we saw is that, uh, you know, we've kind of gone into conservation mode because everyone needs to like reassess their situation and position during this uh, pandemic. But in spite of like cutting out our marketing, fresh user acquisition and stuff like that, we've got about, um, I think, 2x, 2.5x jump in paying customers. So, um, I mean, that's kind of like the proof of the pudding, right? Just, without doing anything, without putting the word out there, people were just coming onto the app and paying us. And um, uh, li li like uh, even Shikhar mentioned is that the main thing that uh, kind of uh, was like a big shift for us as well was uh, the launch of this classroom kind of product that we've now rolled out where, you know, live teachers are teaching and kids are chatting below that uh, live feed. Uh, there are tutors, other tutors making corrections and, you know, helping out kids in the chat uh, in real time. And stuff like that. So the whole real-time approach to uh, coaching or training on a mobile app where there's um, like a mix of media on the screen and there's like an instructor-driven uh, approach, uh, which, which is very similar to what happens in the traditional classroom. I think that has seen a major push uh, in terms of uh, engagement and retention is something that we are seeing at our end. Okay, great. Yes, I think interesting point made, you know, this... Uh, classroom experience has gone digitally live, you know, uh, we yes. were, um, I, I, I don't have that probably number, but uh, to my mind, probably, you know, the ratio has changed maybe 70s to 30, maybe we are 70% yeah. <laughs> you know, doing live classes right now. Right. Um, Kashyap, can you also share, I think, I think, uh, although you wear the business hat also, but I think there's less to worry right now about business for e-learning guys but more to worry probably from operations and delivery point of view. So, so what's, what's your take and what's your view on this, you know, issue, how probably COVID changed the uh, e-learning space as such. So, uh, Faisal, I, I'll talk a bit about, you know, also setting context that I think one of the differences is that Simply Learn focuses more on the professional learning space and our customers are more working professionals who are looking at upskilling and, uh, you know, getting better credentials or better skills, which can fast track their career. And uh, I, I think when the entire COVID uh, situation started, there was, uh, you know, there was an open question that, you know, what's going to happen? One is that people are insecure about their careers and therefore are going to save money and don't want to invest in something. The other is that people are insecure about their careers and they are clearly seeing the shift towards digital. And that's why they want more and more digital upskilling so that their career is future proof. And what we've clearly seen is that the second uh, thought process has won over and people are very clear that, you know, this is a once in a lifetime disruption where it could completely change industries. There'll be some industries that may not exist after this and there will be more industries that will come up during this entire uh, transition. And as a result, we are seeing very, very strong demand in terms of uh, people really driving towards digital skilling and getting ready for the transformation that's going to happen in their career in the next uh, couple of years. So I think that's one very, very strong trend. Um, apart from that, I think one very clear direction that I see is that, you know, uh, for many, many years, uh, online learning has continuously made inroads and captured a higher sh share of the market. But there was always the question that, you know, if I have a classroom nearby, why not go for that? Right. So one of the things that this pandemic has done is that suddenly there is no option. So your college is online, university is online, coaching center is online, skilling classes are online. So it, it's more that you are forced to make choices within online options. There is no other alternative, right? And, and what I believe that does is more than that it does. So in, in some sense, when you are taking a new product to market and building behavior, you want to do sampling, right? 
so covid 19 is your dream you know sampling event that basically everybody will be forced to experience online learning and i think all of us on this panel are of the opinion that there is so much of great work happening on the technology side that once people experience it en masse then a lot of people are going to stick on to it right so, so that is what is the biggest challenge that the spike is going to come because there are no other options now is your experience good enough that after this situation stabilizes you're still going to have these people sticking on to you and and that's really what the entire focus is all about absolutely two interesting points one i think you know as you said so probably we are moving from digital skilling to digitally skilled you know getting digitally skilled that's instant you know indeed one uh, thing there uh, second uh, probably you know uh, this this situation has led us to a uh, to a to a point where probably there is no distinction differentiation between uh, production and development environments you know it's all probably uh, everything is live you know it's happening on the go so so we need to uh, probably uh, align accordingly uh, come moving on to you ankush uh, again i want to understand you know you deal with you know similar kind of uh, 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 students so to say and they are again you know very very tech savvy so so did you find any any peculiar expectations from them and you had to kind of align accordingly so uh, our audience is actually a little different from uh, what kashyap mentioned right like so in case of uh, our audience we are mostly majority of our students are actually college students uh, who are uh, who understand that they need help outside college to really upskill themselves and uh, like upskill and like then basically get ready for the interviews that they are going to face in few years right so uh, and not like uh, automatically like i think like uh, professionals still can pay a lot more but college students are still far more dependent upon their parents and that's where basically the economic uh, impact of covid plays a very interesting role as well overall uh, i think like uh, we have seen positive trends in terms of people looking to learn online and uh, that has definitely pushed it forward for us as well uh, in terms of the expectations that they have i think uh, people like uh, from online generally as kashyap mentioned like most of the people were just expecting that online is going to be a worse experience than offline right just because you don't have the teacher in front of you and how would you raise doubts how would you ask doubts right one thing that we realized is that we were able to like match those like we were able to get to a place where they were surprised that the expectations were not properly set for them and the kind of uh, support that they can get in case of online learning uh, is is actually unparalleled from uh, what you can actually achieve in offline the kind of experiences that you can generate using technology is far far better than what you can do in an offline classroom Right. right so on, on like talking about the biggest challenge for us was not really technology like really scaling our servers or anything like uh, or building a different solution uh, it was mostly around being able to uh, operationally scale uh, the sort of uh, so in our case we actually solved doubts using teaching assistants who are interns who are working with us like we had to scale that number from like a 100 to more like a 1000 in a short span of time and making sure that we are able to maintain that quality along with from those teaching assistants right so that was one of the most interesting challenges uh, that we had to really face here and make sure that students are having uh, a really good experience okay great great up uh, coming to you panchdev um, you know i think you 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 guys had started something like what we can say aggregating you know schools yep. like 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 others are doing for other yep. businesses and i'm sure you must have seen a lot of traction because uh, you know the, the the day this thing happened everybody started like okay where is my app where is my website yeah. you know and and, yeah. and other such thing where is my content so so what has been the experience for you guys out there? yeah so uh you know i would say for us it was a fairly smooth ride and that because you know back in 2015 also when we started though we had not you know uh foreseen or you know preempted covid but when even when we were we were doing our first few hundred schools right or you know up to even 1000 uh, 1500 1, we used to go with this uh, you know uh, 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 you know one line uh, positioning that okay even if you are not going to use us for everything you might have emergencies so at least you know get on the system 
right? So somewhere or the other, people knew, like schools knew that this is an app from where you can run your business all along. So what happened in April was that, you know, cities after cities, like we, we were already there in 400, 500 cities, uh, you know, and towns, you know, on a India map at our first. But say, we, even in towns where we had just two schools, now the whole thing was viral. So you, you would see a school, you know, coming in, getting onboarded on its own. Jo, uh, earlier, it used to be a lot of effort for us to, you know, kind of teach the admins and, you know, run between admin and principal because there are multiple stakeholders involved and then the teachers. And all of a sudden, this all became very smooth exercise. Right. Right. All of a sudden, people were coming in and you would see, like, you know, I, in my own hometown, you know, one DAV came in and uh, probably every single school that exists in that town, you know, all of a sudden... Uh, between 1st April to 12th April is using that. And similarly, on the engagement side, uh, you know, uh, jumps happened. So we had certain issues. We obviously had because all of a sudden, you know, uh, earlier if people used to send five homeworks, you know, now teachers were trying to send whole videos of 30 minute classes, which our system could not support. Right. So, so there was some sort of uh, uh, learning and education, educating that happened throughout April. Uh, it was a time when, you know, and we are a very small team that, uh, you know, we kind of worked 18, 19, 20 hours a day. Uh, but uh, uh, by, by the month end, things uh, kind of stabilized on the B2B front, like, you know, from uh, schools using us front. And then there came the second side, you know, where we have our entire learning content, which is built on top of it. And there we had a different kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, challenge now, because we have, you know, different kind of uh, learning products. We have videos, we have worksheets, we have all India tests that happen every week. And, you know, we have uh, certain games and everything, uh, you know, learning games and everything. So earlier, video used to be a major channel medium. Like for everyone else, video would have got picked up, right? For us, video got down. Like our videos, the, their usage got down because probably the schools were now sending that video. So your 30 minutes that you had to, you know, that yeah. class was happening online. And all of a sudden, the worksheets and test adoption was like, you know, 10x, 20x. Okay. And so, 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 so that sort of a change, uh, you know, uh, happened for us. But as I told you that since we were anyways, since last five uh, years, our product more or less meant for this, what happens if such a time comes, we were able to uh, sell through. I'll, 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 we'll, we'll probably discuss, you know, about more in maybe next round. Yeah. Uh, you said you have been working for 18, 19 hours. I'm sure everybody here. and Yeah, so no, I'm telling that, that all of a sudden that time came. But, but and you know, then things everybody is at home. So, yeah. so that's, that's another side of the coin. Yeah. Coming yeah. to you, Mothisham, I want to understand from you as well. Uh, so, so what did this, you know, this situation mean for you, your organization, and probably what you feel it means for the uh, you know, industry as a whole? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Faisal. Uh, yeah, to start with, actually, I would like to put here that we have two platforms, not one platform. One is uh, Tutorials Point, and maybe many of here uh, are aware of uh, Tutorials Point. So Tutorials Point is mainly being used by higher uh, education students and working professionals. Uh, second platform, we have Tutorix, which is relatively new, but uh, Tutorials Point is very old website. It's uh, We started in 2006. Now, uh, as per uh, post-COVID means I don't see any fluctuation in tutorials point. Only difference is whatever uh, uh, like students and working professionals were using that content. They just moved from their offices to their home. That's the only difference I can see. Uh, there is no little dip. There is no little gain during uh, all this uh, pandemic. Yeah, uh, if uh, we see previous year's uh, uh, trend, then I can say during all this uh, September, October, and all means it used to be very high uh, upward trend, but uh, uh, right now it's very constant. I don't know the reason, but it's very constant in comparison to previous years. Uh, that is for higher education. So regarding uh, that K-12 for tutorials, actually, uh, though it, it is again digital platform, and uh, uh, we were never offline. We were never offline, so we don't know. Uh, what uh, could have been the impact, but yes, uh, for us, Im uh, what impacted us most uh, is the selling part, definitely. Uh, whatever uh, we wanted to do on ground, we are not able to do that on ground. And uh, the main uh, challenge is coming because we are not face to face uh, to the parents or I mean, ultimately to the customer. So we are not able to propose 
what we want to propose and we what we want to show so uh, for us major challenge is coming in the selling side otherwise uh, for us uh, business is same uh, even pre covid and post covid great great yeah. uh, coming to you uh, praveen so so what does this situation mean to you so the immediate situation where you have addressed me in the end shows that you have chosen the wisest to answer at the end and coming back to covid i would like to say that yes it's a very interesting time for people who are creating online learning solutions in fact for the whole nation we were worrying about pre covid <clears throat> that such a vast population where will the schools and the teachers will come from and today microsoft and facebook and all these organizations are employing people without degrees also dropouts also if you have the right skill so the whole world is changing and india needed that thrust and change and this covid has preponed everything it has brought us to a point where we have to be ready with those solutions for the whole nation my take on making learning fun i mean gamifying education is like all that old school thought of video lectures teacher knowing everything and then teaching i believe in child centric solutions and i am in the k12 space and uh, making learning a little more fun a little more interesting and engaging and we are doing that through gamified approach <clears throat> so i am i have been like right from my school days i used to play pac man and spend all my pocket money on Uh, video game parlor okay so i understand how a human brain gets engaged more when it is a gamified format or a game and i wish to bring gamification into learning and i feel that uh, we have done that to a great extent today we are uh, present across the country we are creating global solutions for learning maths and science uh, i think all of us are creating those solutions which this country needs and we are all doing it in our own ha huh, core areas and our core philosophies and i think india is headed for the in the right direction and this is very much needed for this vast population there was a shortage of uh, there was not a level playing field the best part about this is that a person was getting uh, good quality of education by paying 10 lakh rupee fee in some outstanding school or college university and another child was sitting in a village and wondering ke what is education so now with technology lot of interesting things like that level playing field is getting created where at a very affordable price lot of people almost the whole country will be able to get quality education and that's going to be a very big change and very big thing for this nation sure sure praveen uh, we'll of course you know talk more in detail and probably on on from infrastructure and other points of view as we move uh, coming to you sumit and uh, probably then i'll i'll move on to ajaz uh, so sumit what does this situation mean for you and and in your opinion what does it mean for the industry So Faisal, uh, copy kitab is primarily focused on higher education. Uh, mm. So uh, it's pretty different from K twelve in higher education. Here, it's not by emotional or push, but by choice. People come over and and one one thing we all agree like education is happening. If you see the seasonality or whatever happens, whether it's COVID or during exams, it's not by so much by the choice. It's by force. because we tend to try to crack good marks good grades good numbers that's how our whole uh, ecosystem evolves in india right in uh, during covid it it happens like you know, the way it happened to demonetization all digital payment companies so during this covid uh, adapting uh, digital platforms or any mode in ed tech it, it was not choice for anybody whether it's a tutor institute or user so good thing is whole consumer behavior has got changed over this 4 5 months for uh, copy kitab uh, we are primarily into you know managing whole learning life cycle for uh, students so it's in content play so for us we were already in uh, digital space 
but demand surge multifold for us like whether it's institutional or whether retail users they were like jumping because even the physical books were not there in the market and everybody wants to have piece of content mm. and uh, whatever way, whatever format it may be it may be book it may be video it may be notes or it may be you know any kind of previous question papers depends on respective users so one thing is for sure consumer behavior got changed and two is we all sitting here at corona positive covid positive companies right because for us all of us at tech company work positively here <laughs> so these two things we clearly see going forward and uh, i see uh, you know end of the day uh, it comes down to tech and technology is just enabler right so whatever we all are doing technology is the enabler of what we are trying to impart and wherever we are trying to connect with whatever user you have whether it's executive working in company or a student or teacher right end of the day uh, ownership for us though this uh, uh, covid did good job for us as a tech company but end of the day how we are going to engage our users respective users and how we are going to make it easier for them so when they are moving out of you know compulsion post covid are they going to stick with us or not so if you everyone every one of us is just keeping close eye on that and are watching our respective consumer and just trying to work with them whatever way they want to engage with us for their respective needs i would say sure. so it's been pretty good for copy kitab just to summarize like you know uh, all the matrices are moving pretty good and uh, we are quite happy with the things okay okay um, coming to you ajaz i think uh, you already got one compliment in the opening remarks only from ankush when he said technology is not an issue for us you know uh, probably there are other issues so so uh, what did uh, what were those maybe two three uh, key things that probably your customers from the industry wanted uh, as this situation you know happened what what were those two three things that that you saw everybody may be asking for? Yeah, could you please repeat the last ten seconds? I'm sorry, I was okay. my, my internet connected was what's not stable. I'm really sorry. I'm yeah. saying, what were those two three things that your customers asked? You know, probably every customer of yours was looking for during this situation. Sure. So um, I think uh, I've I've personally used uh, most of the apps, and um, but just by looking at how uh, they were able to scale their operations during pandemic. Uh, i think uh, as an end user i did not face any challenges while i was accessing uh, their content and most of the apps are unique uh, for example uh, like utter focuses on a few things so while simply learn focuses on uh, on building a professional content and copy kitab is is focusing on higher education so uh, and coding ninjas is focusing more on like that the, the the kids are dependent on the parents in order to fund for their learning uh the the challenges uh, in terms of how their end users were different in terms of who were accessing that content um but we were uh, fortunate enough to work with uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the large e learning platforms in india and we were under the pressure at that point of time because it was not just e learning which kind of saw a sudden increase in the demand at that point of time there were also ott is another uh, entertainment content which was which was also in the rise and because of this sudden increase um, in 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 the in, in the content demand right what we generally tend to ignore is the infrastructure which is built to serve this uh, content uh, if you look at uh, the isps itself i'm sure uh, most of us complain uh, the issues uh, with regards to the isps going down multiple times or we not getting access to the speed that uh, they, they promised us obviously the the scale at which they were operating uh, was was limited and this put us um, in in a, in a position where uh, we had to uh, overcome some of those challenges and uh, we were uh, pretty lucky in fact to use uh, some of the peering relationship that with highest with, with with the isps to ensure their content not just gets routed in the last mile uh, with the best optimal experience possible but nobody would want to also access the content when it is buffering or it's kind of loading slow right so these challenges are something unique Unvis uh, it, it's not generally visible when we are uh, uh, when when the things are working fine uh, in the end but these are some of the infrastructure challenges that uh, we saw uh, during the pandemic and it still continues uh, to rise because it's it's not going anywhere obviously uh, this has given an opportunity for most of us to keep consuming the content on different platforms but some of the challenges were related to how the content gets routed in the last mile okay great great 
So uh, I think we are done with round one, so to say. And, and although the questions have already started pouring in, so I would again request audience, if there are any questions, please, you know, send them across in the Q&A tab and we'll be taking them as we progress and reach towards the end of this discussion. Uh, you know, one thing which is very heartening to see perhaps in this industry is if, if I'm just looking across this, you know, window, I think we have all Indian brands. So I think this is one such sector where perhaps, uh, uh, you know, whether we call it Atmanirbhar Bharat or, you know, you know, make in India, I think that's already happening and happened in this sector like anything we don't see. Uh, that's, that's really something heartening to see. But I'm sure, you know, reaching this level has not been an easy task for any one of you, you know, building this ecosystem, building this technology, building solutions. And, and we are anyways challenged with uh, some of the inherent technologies, for instance, in networks, you know. Uh, unfortunately, maybe, uh, you know, here, uh, what is my experience of 4G may not be the experience of, uh, you know, your 4G. That's a, that's a very big issue we find it here. Uh, so so it's, it's not that easy for anyone to probably, you know, uh, look for any, any such uh, OTTs, is, so to say, you know, uh, uh, business model. Now, there are, when we talk of enhancing this experience, probably there are two, three, uh, definitely some elements which we need to look at. One is, uh, you know, how do we probably have that live stream experience which can be enhanced because as we were talking in the beginning, probably right now, you know, 70% of online learning is, you know, uh, perhaps going, you know, live stream and maybe 30% is going recorded. Uh, then second is even in recorded, you know, how do we deliver it uh, to, the, to the end users? Uh, uh, we need to have that, uh, so to say, CDNs and, you know, that in place. And uh, probably third issue, which, and, and you know, I'll, 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 I'll share this personal experience. So uh, I did, uh, you know, uh, encounter one of my probably clients, you know, who was looking for getting onto online. So the issue that, uh, you know, a gentleman was facing was about how do you make the content secure? You know, uh, because you know, you guys are techies, so you know how content can be, uh, uh, so to say, stolen, recorded, whatever. You know, there are so many uh, techniques to do that. I think these three are really, and and then there are there are there are customers uh, or or you know students who are sharing very very sensitive information, in, you know, with these platforms. So how do you get that, so to say, assurance that uh, you know you can easily transact and transact reliably? So these are, you know, I think uh, two, three inherent issues which go with any kind of such service, including, you know, e-learning. And, and I would now want us to probably, you know, talk a little bit more and get uh, uh, technical, but maybe, you know, still keep it simple uh, to understand what's, what's exactly probably is happening on those sites and how are you people probably, you know, handling this situation, these issues. So maybe we can start again with uh, maybe Ankush to start with. Sure. So uh, first of all, uh, we strongly believe that the area where we are, which is uh, tech education for more adults, right? Like more than like not in K-12, but like uh, most of our audience is 18 plus. We, we sort of believe that recorded content works better uh, than live. Uh, the primary reason for that is that uh, tech, when you're learning tech, when you're learning to code, everybody has their own learning curve. They want to practice and they take their own time. And we have experimented with, bo uh, with both the areas, but we, we have kind of, uh, with both of our, all, almost all of our experiments kind of show that recorded works far better. Uh, as I mentioned earlier as well, but along with the recorded, you need to make sure that you are able to resolve doubts very, very quickly. That's one area that you need to really work. So, uh, so at Code Ninjas, we do everything using recorded content. Now coming to how we deliver it, like I think like there are uh, really good solutions out there in terms of uh, like using, like I don't think anybody should try to build that from scratch unless you have very specific requirements. 
uh, you will be able to find some good uh, solutions which are out there which you should uh, potentially use uh, i think trying to build a system where it will not be downloaded or it will not be copied uh, is i think pretty much a lost cause and uh, so like there are a lot of third party providers who would claim that they will not be able to, like you will not be able to download if you use their system but students will be able to find some way or the other right like so it's almost impossible to really do that but i think one thing we have to understand is that as an edtech player i don't think content is what we are really selling uh, so like the, like you can always find uh content for free at thousands of places on the internet but i think along with the content your service whatever additional to content you are providing that has to be meaningful enough for the consumer to actually uh, believe that there is value in uh they enrolling with you and they learning with you and they paying some money for that otherwise like if you go to youtube i am sure like there be amazing content available it's just that it's not there is no direction to how exactly should i proceed uh what are the kind of problems i should solve post that and if i get stuck how will you help me resolve that and all of these are additional things that you need to do well to make sure uh that uh, consumers are actually coming to you Absolutely. there will always be some students who will find the recorded content one way or the other and they will not they will decide not to pay you but i think that's just the way it's going right right and and you know as you said probably it probably in your case in your flavor the recorded classes may work better but i'm sure you know the other panelists would have would all will 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 have some different views as well so uh, coming to you baswat so how are you essentially taking care of ensuring that it gets delivered rightly uh, security is managed you know uh, the live classes probably are happening you know you know seamlessly so so how are these things getting tackled uh, two things we realized one uh, we have a huge presence of students audience in tier 2 and tier 3 cities Mm-hmm. uh and bandwidth becomes a big constraint so that's one b screen fatigue is another issue so while our anticipation was that live would be the bigger adoption or or the predominant preferred media for delivery of content or teaching we saw a larger uptake in recorded videos being shared through the platform and students consuming content at their own pace so that was one thing that we observed b there was a huge uptake in the amount of assessments and uh, online tests being solved on the platform so self paced learning uh, considering uh, considering schools happening online considering screen fatigue i think self paced learning uh, sort of saw a big uptick there so those are the two things that were there again we did a lot of technology investments uh, solving for lower bandwidth and and we have we've done optimizations across the platform to solve for lower bandwidth and provide access to each and every one in the smoothest possible way however it's an ongoing process it, it takes a lot of time to build that up and and keep improving on it it's an ongoing process but we've made our investments in so we have tier 2 and tier 3 cities uh ankush rajesh said there are loads of out of the box solutions which are available who can uh, help you with that so we have taken we have leveraged all of that to deliver a uh, good quality solution to uh, tier 2 tier 3 cities from a security standpoint again uh, again it's an ongoing process See, you can't be full to 100% full to uh, we do our basic measures around drm around encryption uh, we did a full security audit post uh, pandemic uh, but having said that it's an ongoing process again you have to constantly uh, invest in terms of uh, providing for security we work with customers and they value the privacy and security of the content quite a lot uh, although uh, it's it's hard but it's an ongoing in, uh, investment that you have to make if if you want customers to be uh, uh, attention free and and upload content on your platform uh, uh, constantly so so it's an ongoing investment but then again we have taken certain measures that that we could uh, in protecting the content sure sure so shikhar uh, your views on this other than probably leveraging the code which is available on your website to learn from what other things did you do to really make it a good experience are are you making yeah so exactly i'll agree with ankush and basu as well here that security is only about how much you want it so mm-hmm. if you want i mean the people that we that come to our website and the the people who come to access our courses they are actually programmatically advanced as in terms of using that technology they know how to get around a technology block hole right so keeping uh, keeping this in mind we have actually built out the product in such a way that you have to have videos are only a part of the solution you have assessments done you have challenges done where when people actually learn to get to learn 
that uh, what is that they're lacking so we need to we focus more on that and uh, regarding the technology yes we actually try to limit the make it difficult i would say okay, to download the video it's a little bit difficult and uh, the bandwidth yes like basu mentioned it went from broadband to we we're, we're lucky that it uh, this pandemic came after the geo era right so otherwise we would be with very much limited bandwidths so that is one good thing we the the speeds are pretty much good for us so we built the technology in such, the product in such a way that we have it working on the limited network as well so that is one thing that we did so in terms of security we made it difficult and in terms of bandwidth we optimized the product so that it is easier to access okay great great um amit moving on to you so what have you essentially done as you know something fundamental to ensure that these things you know enhance the delivery and what are those probably continuous things regular things which you keep on doing to enhance it further yeah i'd uh, like to talk about one good thing and one bad thing a uh, good thing that we probably done is uh, we are a chat app to learn english so i'm sure everybody knows that data phase right so cuz the chunks of data can you guys hear me there was some disturbance i think if you could just repeat what you were yeah. saying we missed I'm you i I'd, i'd like to talk about uh, two things one good thing and one bad thing right. the good thing for utter that's been happening is where the chat app to learn english so uh, like you all guys might be knowing when data doesn't work whatsapp usually works right cuz they optimized at the 2g level where there's very tiny chunks of data going on the wire and that's why it's very easy to send messages from one mobile client to another in spite of all the laggy networks and um, latency and stuff like that that we face in india right so for us uh, you know caching and uh, uh, basically streaming is uh, something that's kind of under control and we don't we don't deal with a problem like that uh, as such post pandemic what i'd really like to talk about is the bad parts and bad parts is um, especially we are realizing this uh, very it's something that we are very new to uh, the minute you let users talk to each other on any platform if you are talking about recorded content use case is very straight forward and clear i don't i don't think any tech platform can uh, do a better job than what youtube has done so far and it's stupid for us to aspire to do uh, caching and lagging um, you know trade offs the way youtube does it probably or maybe netflix does it probably so um leaving the recorded content out uh, where we are really trying to push the envelope uh, in terms of technology post pandemic is the real time use case right and everyone has very nice things to say about real time learning and you know uh, live classes is mandatory and like nobody has a choice there are no classrooms and stuff like that one problem which we are unable to deal, deal with is misuse and abuse uh, and this is in the context of only uh, when you let users talk to each other on your platform um we do a lot of filtering for age we do a lot of filtering for uh, profiling a customer what do they want to learn what do they not want to learn and stuff like that but abuse elements is uh, you know it's it's like a it's like a nuisance that is more like a pest right uh, there's only two guys out of 200 guys in a live classroom who are probably going to abuse and is going to spoil the experience of all 200 guys right so mm-hmm. are there any toolkits out there or are there any uh uh you know programmatic api driven automated layers out there that can help us cut out uh, this abuse uh, from real time uh, you know uh, use cases is uh, i feel like a very big hole in the entire tech space and uh, i'm sure i'm not getting into security audit and stuff like that there's you know a lot of people doing it regularly it's like more of a question of do you clean your house i clean it every day some other guy cleans it every 3 days so mm-hmm. that's not the real challenge the challenge is to uh, you know identify two or three different types of abuse that happens on the platform and then build solutions uh, you know maybe somewhere that experts like you probably can come in and uh, isaz can come in and probably tell us if we can use certain frameworks that will help and prevent this abuse and misuse of the system and uh, by abuse and misuse i uh, primarily mean two different types uh, one type is unknowingly done so we've got kids who press uh, who are probably 8 years old and they are probably playing around on their dad's phone and and they tick that i am above 18 <laughs> and then they go into a live chat which is strictly for adult learning and there's a whole bunch of problems associated with that so this is an immature uneducated user how do we control him and the second is the miscreants which i'll basically going to say 
all the <laughs> different profanity things that normally people do on chat platforms, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, bullying and abusive language and uh, trying to you know gang up against one student and stuff like that. And I feel there's no solution out there right now. If I mean, happy to discuss what other people are doing on their respective platforms, but I feel this is an under-addressed uh, kind of space. Absolutely, we're kind of dealing with that problem right now. <laughs> Absolutely. I think there was one, one case of where somebody, you know, uh, exploited the screen annotization, uh, you know, a, a, a tool to, to yeah. do some, something. Some, like Angus said, right, the, if there is no way, the youngest user on your platform will figure out that way. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> we need ways to, like, control this. Right, right, right. Uh, Kasha, what is your view on this? Like, what have you probably done as fundamentally, you know, addressing these issues and what are those recurring things, continuous things, which you try to, uh, you know, adopt to improve this uh, thing? Please unmute, unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, Faisal, I, I was saying that, see, I mean, honestly, the way I look at business, I mean, um, the kind of tech challenges that we are talking about, I don't see them as an issue. So they are a non-issue for us. I do not think that bandwidth is a challenge in India anymore. Um, mm. So there's nothing to solve for. Uh, I, I think security from a product perspective, I think, uh, you know, whatever is needed for business, I think that is available. So I, I do not think, I mean, practically, I don't think anybody out of all, everybody on this panel, nobody has a tech challenge to solve for. Um, I, I think the challenges that do exist and every company will have its own take towards how to serve the customer. I mean, for for Simply Learn, if I were to talk about the top two things that come to mind, um, one is more this that our viewpoint is more that education or ed tech uh, in the online space has been scraping the surface so far. And uh, we are really going to see the mass adoption wave only now. And, and it's, it's not even started yet. So the next five to 10 years is going to be the mass adoption phase, especially as far as profession scaling is concerned. And uh, I, I think, you know, uh, the e-learning content or the videos and, you know, kind of learn on your own model works very well for the top 10, 15% highly self-driven people who are clear about what they want and they will kind of get that done. Um, when mass adoption happens and your average guy comes online and he wants results and he wants outcomes for his career, from the program that he's doing. Um, my feeling is more this that this model will veer towards more assisted learning. And therefore, I mean, if I look at Simply Learn's uh, focus from a product perspective, I mean, we look at the entire model as either classroom in the cloud or a bootcamp kind of a model that you will have recorded videos which serve as textbooks, but then you have a lot of live classes from industry experts who are creating that entire engagement, clarifying doubts, making sure that the actual application of that uh, understanding is coming through and combination of learning by doing. So especially for professional skilling, I think, uh, you know, projects and actually executing something is, is where the magic really lies. I think any amount of watching videos is not going to do that. So I mean, one point that we are very strongly focused on is on making this entire experience better and better, that it's a classroom in the cloud. You have your videos to learn on your own, but then you have live interaction, projects, execution, and that's what delivers results at the end of the day. So that's one. Uh, the second thing that uh, I, I think is a problem for, in my opinion, professional skilling as well as uh, K-12, is this entire point of students being at different levels in the class. And any classroom that you look at, there will be 10, 20% of the people who are bored that this class is too slow. And there are 10, 20% of the people who are completely lost that I can't understand what you're talking about, right? And it is finally you're only optimizing for the average guy, uh, right? And, and this is something that is a place where technology will deliver better results than offline. Offline, there's mm-hmm. nothing you can do about it. If you are a teacher in a classroom, right, um, you cannot do anything about it. You will have to talk to the average guy. There'll be guys who are bored. They'll think you are too, too slow. There'll be guys who are lost and you can't do anything about them. But technology has an answer, right? You have adaptive learning options. You can change cohorts, you can change the track at which the person is learning. And and this is one of the core areas where online education will get better than offline. So I think there are a whole lot of things where online education is trying to get as good as offline. This is one of the areas where online education by definition will be better than offline. So I think these would be the top two items in terms of product experience, which, which we would spend most of our time on. 
absolutely absolutely but but while you said that probably there are no technology you know uh, challenges maybe on the network side uh, many of them are addressed bandwidth but you know at the same time i think we have to also understand that uh, say smartphones for instance which is the primary mode of you know accessing internet over here uh, you know 92% of smartphones being used in india are you know typically you know the ones which are bought under 25000 rupees okay uh, then if you even look for sub 10000 it's like you know 80 82% of the smartphones are actually sub 10000 and and even this during this covid period a majority of phones were bought you know in this 8 10000 range essentially to you know aid learning and all that so we don't you know we know how the experience could be out there which is probably out of our control but you know as a platform we have to ensure that we are delivering best to them so probably those challenges are still there even even on the on the home wi-fi side you know we may have wi-fi 5 device in hand but the router might be you know an old one which is still not you know capable of delivering the right experience so i i still see you know those challenges out there and probably the platforms will have to adapt to those uh, yeah i think Faisal, uh, all of these are mostly solved problems i mean uh, mm -hmm. video optimization or you know load time optimization i think as i think amit was mentioning that i mean you, you've got technologies which have already solved it right so i, I really don't see and and I, i'm not kind of saying something needs to be done about it but I think most companies have tech teams who are fully capable of addressing that. So I mean, okay. at least for me, that would not be my top three problem. That will okay. be maybe like a tenth problem that yeah, I, okay. maybe I need to think about it. So okay, okay. Uh, maybe uh, coming to you, Praveen. So what's your view on it? Like, what have you done to maybe you know keep this experience other than maybe you know uh, on the gamification side and you know trying to play with the content? But what what on the tech side probably have you done? you please unmute yourself so there is a question also which is related to what you are saying that so when we were trying to reach the underprivileged kids mm -hmm. the students who are in jawahar nagode vidyalayas and remote areas tribal students now they don't have connectivity they don't have devices bahut sare issues so these issues are there but yes solutions do exist and are on the way so the governments created uh, tab labs so they kept 50 tabs at one place maintained by them and children can come and have access to them great there are there are ways which will be like you will reach the last mile child using technology and there will be solutions issues but finally, we will have the solutions. So that's undoubted. As Kashyap said, ke, uh, if you are focused on urban areas and people who are educated, so this is not a very big challenge in today's date. But when you try to reach out to those last mile students, you do face problems and issues. And <clears throat> solutions are coming and they will be there. Absolutely. Like, I agree with you. Like, you know, uh, it's and not our app is like device agnostic. You can <clears throat> download it using 3G also. You can play the games on offline as well as online mode. So those solutions everyone has and sooner or later they will be in place for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, maybe coming to you, Mohtashim. So what's your view on this? Like what have probably you done, you know, maybe on tech side? Yep. yep. Uh, yes, at a tutorials point side, I don't uh, find any challenge because uh, uh, users are coming based on their need. They have to come because they are all working professionals. At a tutorial side, uh, I will say there are a lot of challenges uh, technology wise. I will not agree, means I cannot compare them with working professionals because this is a segment who waits when some president or ex-president will die and I will celebrate a leave. That's the segment. How to engage him? For example, if I give uh, you uh, one scenario of uh, live activities, which we are missing uh, nowadays. My daughter told me uh, yesterday uh, that we used to do a lot of uh, activities in class. For example, uh, they, they will cut a paper in puzzles and then they will map it, which they cannot do online. Though technology is there, 
but we were not prepared for that we haven't built those tools we don't have those tools so far available okay if we be honest with ourselves how many teachers have been trained to teach online i will say very few percent okay mm-hmm. so uh, tool wise uh, or uh, training wise so we see we have to understand e learning means digital learning and live streaming both are totally different things okay until in online streaming my teacher is giving attention to all the students it's useless for me then right. i will definitely go for recorded videos because they are more uh, impactful they have been uh, developed nicely with visuals and all mm-hmm. but yes if in uh, online streaming my uh, children is getting uh, a special attention teacher is giving uh, attention instead like we are having 200 student in a class and we are teaching the whatever we are teaching that's fine that is final there is no scope to ask a question there is no scope to uh, answer on that so that is then useless means for me that's waste of time uh for, so uh, i will say means uh, the, it will take definitely take time means uh, to uh, optimize uh, all this uh, online classes we have technology no doubt technology is there but we need to use that technology to optimize it as i told you we can build very nice tools uh, to perform live activities to teach uh, very nicely to give a special attention to every student see whatever zoom and meets you are seeing they were not been developed for teach teaching purpose everybody right. knows that and we cannot deny that right. but because it was the need of the time we started using them if mm. uh, you will give me one example okay that the tool which uh, we have specialized uh, especially developed for teaching then i don't know so far so those are th- those things are lacking they are in terms of backbone like limelight or amazon s3 or uh, cloud front or maybe uh, verizon we are using verizon right now so from that front we don't have any challenge we don't have any bandwidth challenge we don't have any processing power channel mean uh, you will very cheap uh, we host our services in german it's in peanuts actually the, the, so we never thought about okay we have to pay that much or this much uh, but problem is coming we don't have tool we don't have those capabilities which we can use nicely and we can see uh, uh, something is better than nothing that's the only case we are seeing right now during covid yeah we had some need and we brought up something uh, which is uh, zoom and uh, meet we are teaching which is fine that's okay yeah, but yeah o- yeah over the period of time definitely the optimized tools will come and they will be built up on this existing technology only sure sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, maybe panchdev you can you can add your views to this discussion what 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 do you feel yeah. about it yeah i would i would like to add on from three you know previous uh, uh, you know comment one from bhaskar that it's a constant process right you, you there is no end to it so you are constantly optimizing 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 you are iterating you are optimizing that's one second you know ankush made a very nice point on from you know higher learning perspective that holds true for k5 to k12 and k12 as well that you know why are you consuming content whether it is in any format right whether it is in video live video or recorded video or it's a assessment worksheet or it's a sort of test what the end goal or the end objective and delivering that is the most important thing and they are two right one is learning outcome that you know why you are doing this to be able to demonstrate this that you know this is how you are doing because there is no dearth of free content Uh, as you mentioned on youtube about anything in life right so how you position uh, you know the entire content and uh, its consumption that it triggers two things demonstrable learning outcomes that you know this is where i was in the journey this is where i have reached then mm. then you you win and you solve a problem second is as kashyap was saying that you know there are different kind of uh, learners you know there will be a top 10% there will be bottom and you have optimized so there are two uh, again there there are two things one is you learned and you grew right that graph that you can demonstrate the other thing that you can demonstrate is the effort put in hmm. so like in the section that we are uh, uh, faisal you know parents really love when we are able to tell them that this is the amount of effort you know your child put in which your school could not do you know i can tell you that he learned x minute of video content and then he was so nice he went on and also solved four worksheets so whether you see that growth or not there effort is there <coughs> so what happens is that the entire experience you know of 
uh, delivery, why you are doing the delivery, the what answer is something else, the why answer gets solved. So that's one thing that we have been focusing a lot, like last six months, even before, uh, you know, in fact, uh, January onwards, even before pandemic had hit. And, okay. and that's how we see uh, the whole content thing. We again do not do live stream. We, the video that we have are recorded only, but that more, that closing the loop is what, uh, you know, we have a focus on right now, which, where, which, and, uh, you know, focus on to be able to do it while coexisting with the school, because, you know, you cannot replace a school uh, and while coexisting with probably uh, even a, you know, personalized tuition for one certain subject that, you know, a parent might feel that, uh, you right. know, my kid needs this. You know, no matter uh, what, you know, we, we Indians have that word that if I've been not good in math uh, as a parent, I feel that six stage that I cannot teach myself anymore. Let me send to a class. So you cannot, uh, at this stage, at least we cannot uh, replace that. But what we can do is we can coexist and we be able to solve, uh, you know, so do these two things from our con content delivery perspective. One, uh, demonstrable, you know, learning outcome that you are at X level, you are at Y now. Okay. And second effort level that, you know, this is the kind of effort a child has put in, sure. uh, you know, on day on day basis and week on week basis. And, and that, 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 that's something that's been really taken up. Okay. Okay. Probably last view from Sumit on, on the client side or, you know, uh, delivery side of, so, so, so what is your take on this, you know, uh, uh, probably uh, issue about how are we, you know, tackling through technology, these, uh, you know, experience things. So Faisal, as I said, uh, technology is an enabler and uh, most of the like panelists already said technology, everybody has, uh, you know, worked out something and there are a lot of open source or things are available which can be built around the, as per the consumer point of view, the student mm -hmm. point of view. Uh, security is something in Indian context. Uh, people want to pay if you give them what they're looking for rather than saying mine is better and naya better rin chalta ara. It's been since our childhood, we've been watching those TV ads, right? Mm -hmm. So important is uh, very important. What we have observed as a company is uh, relevancy and curation. Because as you would all would know here that India is second uh, largest uh, on Google, on Googling uh, things related, related to education, right. number two in the world. So when people are looking for that and YouTube and Google, everything is full of, a lot of stuff is there. I'm sorry. But that's where, uh, that's where a coach, uh, curated content, a relevancy. And uh, we have discussed, and I already pointed it out, like every uh, one side doesn't fit all, everybody talks about it. But digital has given this democratization to students to choose from, even the teachers also. Uh, you can pick and choose, you can give them, and everybody is not learning same way, same pattern, same pace. Okay. So same pace is not there, then de your delivery module should be like that. You're offering what they're really looking for. That's where technology maybe when we're talking about AI and ML and those kind of things, that would come into picture that you are you are doing the, whether offline, video, blended, whatever. Uh, whatever way you are delivering the content or teaching. Uh, end of the day, your student or whosoever the audience is really grasping it. Because as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we learn by force. We don't do by choice. So whatever time comes, suppose the beginning of the session or semester, he or she might not be that serious. Mm -hmm. They just want to crack the minimum passing grades. But exam come exams, they will study something, even if it is guide or previous question paper, but at least they will study from something. And if you are prepared to deliver them what they're looking for, and this generation, if you see, we are on the go generation. Like you, you want Uber, you want Swiggy, you want Zomato, you want everything on the click on the go. So that's where technology should be prepared for. You should be able to deliver on the go. Right. And what relevant they are looking for, that, is, that becomes most important rather than, you know, giving that 30 minutes or 45 minutes kind of sure. thing. So this is what uh, our learning on copy kitab. Sure, sure. So Praveen, I'll, I'll come to you. Uh, probably just let's, let's hear first from you. I say something which uh, in the context of what Sumit said. So Sumit, when you said learning is by force, I totally disagree with that. Sorry, Yaar. Matlab, I it's believe in making Praveen, uh, Yes, yeah. sir, for this segment, I think uh, the Sumit is right. For this segment, this, uh, <laughs> this is what we also observe. Yeah, but we need to change four. that. See, Maybe uh, once uh, you are in field and you are working professional, then it becomes your need. But uh, until uh, you attain a maturity 
definitely it's so before a, that instead of the force method we need to use a motivation method a interesting method we need to make it interesting this is what yeah, i mean agreed we have to change that but right now it is what is happening around there in the market and if you see everybody knows the data it is not hidden secret how many people that's, are employable that's, that's how many people are prepared, ready for you know uh, job ready we all are interviewing guys every day so we all know that there is not hidden data but I this think is something I, we are trying to solve sorry sorry to interrupt i think gentlemen you know both the views will stay you know correct i you know i somehow think both are uh, you know uh, from their perspectives both are right this is a natural phenomenon this is something which is happening yeah uh, just coming on to you ajaz so you heard what what these platform owners said how they are tackling the you know uh, how how they feel uh, are leveraging from technology about these issues so anything you feel you want to add to this probably which is being missed out or uh, something different you are going to uh, maybe propose or suggest yeah so um, they're all right uh, the the technology is available uh, in the market uh, we all have access to the some some of the best technologies either be it open source or be it a managed service which has been provided by some of the large uh, companies it's just a matter of how we view it and how do we want to adopt that technology for example uh, we all um, uh, build a, uh, it, it takes a lot of effort to build a great platform and it it requires us to hire good amount of uh, good good teachers on the platform to to come and uh, prepare content and nobody would want their content to be available or stolen from their website and uh, if you look at security right uh, security is 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 a mindset uh, it just like an insurance policy right everybody knows they're going to die someday but nobody knows when uh, it's it's better uh, and we uh, and if i just look at e learning uh, i'm sure we all have seen uh, the recent um, Uh, article where one of the popular e-learning came under uh, a massive attack where their entire user base was stolen and that's a, that's an embarrassment and nobody wants to be in a situation so um, that's one number two is uh, if you just look at the cloud model uh, i'm sure we all use different sort of cloud technologies if we go and read their uh, how they want us to consume their uh, technologies right they ensure the security of their platform but they but it's our a responsibility to secure our our content uh, they don't take responsibility for our content right. so and and third is the access to the security uh, people folks right we can't expect a developer to do a security job because they 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 good at coding they they're not good at hacking so uh, it's it's a it's our responsibility that we factor in all three uh, which means uh, i mean uh, i mean being a security company um, even we come under attack every day and it's it's a board level discussion that happens in a company it's not just a job of a chief security officer to to handle it so uh, i agree with everyone uh, that there is access to technology it's just the mindset as to how we adopt those technologies and at what stage we adopt it so that we don't want our customers data to be accessible to someone else who don't uh, who, who don't want that <laughs> to be there It, it takes effort to build a business, and we want to protect that business. Absolutely, and uh, you know the good part is that this is edu tech, so so tech is somewhere you know deep rooted into this domain. So I don't think anybody would be averse to tech. So gentlemen, we have some time, uh, maybe fourteen, fifteen minutes left. So let's also start taking some questions, and then I'll very quickly have some rapid fires kind of things for you, and take the questions also from the audiences along. So there is there's an there's an There's a question about like, do you provide any training sessions to your clients? I don't like it's not targeted to anyone, so I'm not honestly understanding like you know to whom it is it is addressed. But we so yeah. in our app, the live teaching and all the features and how to make the children learn. So there are brief training sessions which are needed, like one session. That's it. Okay. To make them understand how to use the dashboards and all, and I'm sure. maybe every one of us must be like your franchisees also you want to train them right 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 okay i think yes like everybody yeah. must be training and you know uh, giving a constable time so i don't think yeah yeah okay so uh, it's about probably praveen yeah again question for you so you mentioned about reaching to under privileged so can you all please throw some more light on how you're reaching to them i think you already mentioned like probably uh there are these uh device banks being created and maybe some other initiatives already 
happening around so uh, i belong to a village son of a farmer eldest son amongst nine brother sisters so i have seen life from that perspective that how challenging it is for a child in a village or a remote area to get good quality education mm-hmm. so this issue is very very close to my heart and when i started reaching out to students and schools so when i met i mean people who are policy makers so they told me we don't have math science teachers in schools because nexalite hit areas are there and if you can teach tribal kids there and make them strong in math science so in maharashtra last year <clears throat> we implemented it in tribal schools eklavya model residential schools 16 of them and after one year their teachers their principals everyone was telling ki bhai sabke marks badhe hain bachcho ko bahut maza aaya 15 students were selected in ntsc that was for the first time that happened so when you receive such feedback to i feel that that is what is very very close to my heart and then now we are in jawahar yeah. navodaya vidyalayas and army air force navy schools which are spread across the country and located very very remotely many of them so okay 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 uh, you know this one more question i raising the price by ensuring that uh, models in which they get access whether it is a tab lab model or it is a csr model where you do not charge the child and you get it funded through someone else so these kind of approaches have been used and that is how we are trying to reach the sure life. sure sure i think i think it's fairly answered so i like next question probably basford to answer so what kind of advantages do indian e learning platforms have over global platforms offering similar courses so it's essentially i think around content well, so around service uh, indians uh, in in terms of sheer number of educators i think india falls uh, in terms of uh, uh, personalized content delivery the kind of educators that india would have probably would be higher or or would be much larger compared to other uh, other countries out there indian uh, educators are often uh, uh, very used to doing jugad so they would have very innovative methods of creating content and innovative methods of teaching which i think is not present across the world i mean you would see uh, teachers hanging their phones via some stick or a, or a ruler and then and teaching uh, using a pen and a paper that is something that you don't find any anywhere else apart so okay. these are the two distinct advantages uh, which indian uh, uh, content creators have over uh, other content creators across the world sure someone okay, i think I, i'll just uh, add to that little bit fazel so i mean yeah, yeah. Uh, simply learn uh, you know from the kind of uh, footprint that we have i mean india contributes just around 35% of our business whereas 65% comes from us and europe middle east apac and so on so i think we have a first hand view of how a, a business based out of india can be a global business and and that is really the goal that basically so one of the big advantages that india has which very few countries have like for example us and you know china in different fields and so on is a very very large domestic market that can basically create a large company that can take on the world right and i, I think uh, that's that's one thing that i'm seeing across all companies which are becoming large so if you look at some of the large companies in k12 large companies in professional space i i do not think that they think about only india as their market they are thinking about the global market and i i think that's the only way long term to create an edge against international competition that you need to be global as well because if you are a domestic player sooner or later somebody from us will only find it very easy to come in with deep pockets and start dislodging you from your market so i think the only way for indian companies is to use this edge and use the advantage of the large domestic market as well as the low cost structure so for an indian company that is selling into us you have your cost structure in rupees and you have your revenue in dollars and it's it's extremely important in the next 5 to 10 years for indian companies to capitalize these two things and become global players right. if you continue to try and win in your own market i think sooner or later it's going to be very tough okay very quickly uh, you know a question maybe uh, a tricky question uh, have you have you have you implemented some of your school time learning in your solutions anyone anyone you know something you, you uh sir actually tutorials point generally nature from that only during my student life i used to prepare notes short notes only okay 
So when I came in uh, field in 97, I passed out in 97. Then I saw means there is uh, one scope where I can create short tutorials. And that's the, my business. That's my core business, actually. So that is coming from my student time only. <laughs> great, great, great. Yeah. For you... us, uh, yeah, for Copy Kitab, uh, the initial idea came from like, you know, we had an incident in our incident being from a smaller town. Uh, we were looking for a book and we couldn't get during exams. So okay. four of us are friends, teared down different parts of the book and I referred from that. That's okay. where we thought like when I was coming back from US after my job, we thought like this is the problem we can solve through technology. And that's how we accumulated all those ebooks and break it down in chapters so you can have on the go or notes. You don't have to look around and any, anybody can sitting anywhere in the country can, you know, take it as a very substantial price. Even you can pay 10 bucks for, you know, photocopy rather than photocopy price. You can have a legitimate uh, content on the click for you. This is what we solved in Copy Kitab, understanding the same problem for all the students across the country. Okay. I think Amit, you wanted, you, you also raised hand to this. Um, I wanted to actually take another question, interesting question on the Q&A about uh, using AI on chat. And uh, I'd like to say that, I mean, AI on chat is like old stuff. Uh, basically, you can analyze conversational data as like a given and that's why you're on chat, right? right. But the more, more important stuff and I think uh, that is something that all of us as a group should consider is uh, looking at uh, non-type or non-keyboard inputs as uh, you and using algorithms to basically understand if a learner has retained a piece of information. This piece of information has it been very easy for him to understand what content you're showing to him, or has it been very difficult? And therefore, you can alter the path of the next piece of content that is shown to him on the screen. And there's two main areas I feel that uh, there's not enough work being done. One is speech tech, and uh, second is facial recognition. Um, I don't, I don't mean to be like uh, you know Terminator level on on facial mm -hmm. recognition and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. You can draw a fine uh, fine line between keeping the privacy of the user. And okay. using his facial reactions to basically understand if this guy is having a great time learning with your product or, or not. And the same is true with voice as well. So uh, these are the two areas I feel that, uh, you know, you can actually use a hardcore amount of AI techniques uh, to pull understanding about the user from these two input streams, right? And that is something that's not being discussed on any ad tech forum. Uh, like I said, um, you know, Edu tech is done, it's passe. Uh, uh, content uh, co consumption, dissemination is already being done. That's why we are edu tech companies. Uh, real, real time learning to live and stuff like that is already being done. But can you create a journey, learning journey for a, for a kid by understanding simply how he's reacting to your product? And right. reactions are not only on the keyboard, it's a mm -hmm. kind of 360 degree view. I think that will create much better products uh, going forward for all of us. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, so, Amit, uh, just, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Faisal, just to add to Amit, uh, I had replied over here, means uh, that, that, though you are looking for ideal scenario where we can give complete picture what, what is going on in student's mind. But right. we are we are trying to implement a small part of that. Just uh, grabbing his attention means he is looking here or he is looking there. So we are trying to see how much he is focusing Fantastic. on his screen. Yeah, Fantastic. how much he is focusing. So uh, we are doing only that part, and based on that, his focus and uh, by end of the class will generate a small report so that we can yeah. show the teacher if he was attentive to attentive the class or, or he was just looking here and there. Sure. Great, yeah, great, sure. great. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so there are a couple of questions on essentially on the importance of local language vernacular. So uh, anybody, anyone from you who would like to take this question, I, I think it's very important. You know, there's no brainer, but but anybody. There, would is, like a, there is a great demand for vernacular languages. So in, Mar in every state government, wherever we have gone, mm -hmm. they always say that we have very few English schools, but we have a lot of uh, schools which are in using Marathi in Maharashtra and Tamil in another state. So there is a strong demand. And uh, fortunately, in our case, because we have a lot of uh, content, which is not like, uh, which is text and can be converted into any language. So uh, there is a huge demand that I can say. Yeah, I Every know. state needs it. And we are doing uh, eight languages as of now on Copy Kitab platform, Faisal. Okay. Uh, so uh, there's no doubt uh, people feel comfortable, especially in higher education. If you see data and Praveen would know about it, like when he's doing in like, you know, grassroots level, 
Mm-hmm. Lot of these kids when they have to move to college level, especially in professional courses, engineering or medical. A lot of time, these content, uh, these content in their uh, native language were not there, and they used to, you know, though they are decent enough in terms of like grasping and they have enough intelligence, but because of language connect, they used to fail. Okay. And they used to lag behind. So uh, connecting through their language, which they feel comfortable with, uh, something technology is surely solving and it's making their life easier. Uh, I would say so. Yes, regional content is something very important. Just to add something on this, uh, I think like uh, this is actually linked to one thing that we talked about earlier. Where why does Indian companies have a benefit over uh, right. U.S. companies or uh, other companies in at least in Indian market, right? Like so, mm-hmm. definitely uh, understand like what Kashyap mentioned makes a lot of sense from Indian companies trying to build uh, business for outside as well. But uh, like for example, in our case, uh, one question that we had to answer a lot of time is why won't I learn for free on Coursera, or why won't I learn for uh, like uh, similarly like like Udacity became expensive, but like earlier like why won't I do that? And I think the simple answer was that first of all, learning in English itself is a struggle. Mm. Then like learning in American accent becomes a completely different level, right? So. Uh, a lot of our content when we started, we are not like vernacular, like we don't have Bengali or uh, Marathi content, but like when we started, we built all our content in Hindi, which worked really well for us because at least in Northern Bell, like we were able to, uh, there was a clear difference in terms of the learning that the students were able to get to. Valid, valid. And as we expanded, we have built English as well, but like uh, a lot of our content is available both in Hindi and English because of this reason. Sure, sure. So, so yeah. I think... And, uh, I just wanted to add something to that, uh, to, to the vernacular, uh, because that seems to be uh, the popular uh, category in India, because we've got a large population who wants to access the content. And that's one of the, uh, if we did a server recently, and uh, we, we felt that majority of the users in tier two and tier four have always complained about not getting the content uh, at, at, uh, at, at an optimal speed, which it's possible in tier two and tier, tier one, right? And that's an area of investment that Limelight is making by using the ISP pairing and kind of building smart pops in those regions so that we are not just give penetration in tier two and tier, tier one and tier two, but also uh, go deeper further with ISPs in tier three and tier four. So I think that's also something which will make us special uh, in terms of geography and how we uh, de- deliver content uh, to, yeah. to the entire just, uh, just, yeah. just, just uh, out of my curiosity, apart from uh, Sidian, do you provide ISP solution as well? So uh, we, uh, we uh, in terms of hosting, uh, you can offload certain functionalities of your uh, compute capabilities on our no, edge. No, those aesthetic servers, uh, serverless uh, means those technologies are fine, but uh, the pure uh, hosting, uh, I think you don't provide them. You are purely no. in Sidian segment, right? Yeah, we are Sidian security plus you can also offload some okay. logic at our edge. Okay, okay, yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay, thanks, thanks, gentlemen. I think I think maybe uh, just we don't have much of time. I know one question, uh, Fazil, that really needs answered. Okay, and I think I can. Where you know somebody has asked, do teachers see curated content and videos online as a threat to conventional teaching? I, and I, what I, is I, the I, mindset I, like in yeah. smaller cities? So, so I'm, it's I'm exactly the difference. They do not. Okay, you know? I, I'm trying yeah. to answer. You know, in this you know wrap up thing. Okay, yeah. so so so. Definitely, you know, EdTech is going to remain there. It's not like it's something. It's a supplement, sir. It's not an alternative. Definitely, it can never become alternative. Yeah. For sure. sure. Absolutely. Yes, so, so EdTech is going to stay here. It's not something, it's something, you know, which is uh, filling the void mm-hmm. right now. Uh, yes, maybe the percentages and, you know, uh, that might change, you know. Uh, if, right now, it's maybe 100% online. Uh, you know, going forward, we may say, when we go back to school and there will be some, so, so, so that, that shift will be there. Uh, it will complement. And uh, I don't know how, how the future of, uh, you know, schooling and education will get uh, transformed per se. Uh, you know, right now we used to have, typically we used to go to school and then had homework and do it in the evening. Maybe now things will change that we prepare for the school, uh, you know, a day prior using e-learning and then, you know, clear out dots and do, do a lot of classroom, you know, tutorials and all that. So, so things can change like that. I think we have uh, had an interesting uh, and engaging discussion. Uh, thanks to all of you. We definitely got some really, really key takeaways. Uh, um, you know, technology is playing an important role. Uh, 
everybody is deploying probably yes there are challenging challenges but we are also we also are aware that there are solutions and gradually i think uh, we are we are aiming towards that uh, you know bettering that experience uh, which which obviously takes care of uh, you know all those things uh, you know i really like to thank all of you i like limelight and uh, you know exchange for media for organizing this over to you probably priti thank you so much gentlemen for the insightful session and for uh, the time you have put in yes i hope our viewers had a wonderful time as we are together taking digital education to the next level ladies and gentlemen i hope your questions were answered if any more questions do put in now we make sure that we answer through social media and uh, to everybody all our speakers thank you so much uh, you all were brilliant you put in all your effort your time in such an important uh, topic today during this lockdown since the last 5 months everybody's been home and especially students are not suffering uh, because of you because of digital education i applaud i thank you all and to everybody who joined us today i hope you benefited from this uh, we thank limelight presents e4m webinar on enhancing the user experience in online education through quality digital content delivery thank you everybody this is preeti katpal your host and this thank session you. has been recorded we'd be uh, sharing this uh, session recording with all of you Thank you. Have a great Thank day. You, Thank you for some. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.